So let's take a look at the bead chain experiment using numerical methods. This is my solution to the bead chain experiment using numerical methods. I've derived the governing equations here and here. I won't go into them in detail. You can look at them as you see fit. I will just give a brief overview of the methodology. So here we have a diagram of an instantaneous point in time of the bead chain as it comes up, arcs around, and will go down here. So we have a bead, a rod, a bead, a rod, and a bead. As this bead is moving up through this point, it will tend to go in the same direction due to momentum unless acted on by other forces, and indeed there are two other forces that act on it that force it downward and inward. So those forces are gravity acting on this bead and the tension in the bead chain itself coming from this bead, which is off this line down here, it's right here, this bead and this rod and bead are pulling on this bead in this direction, not in the same direction as its line of flight. So briefly, we'll have two perpendicular components to this line of flight of this bead, one caused by gravity, the perpendicular vector to gravitational force will be here. The perpendicular vector to the tension force in the bead chain will be here. They're described fully here, here, and derived. We come down through all this, end up with one equation right here. And this equation relates alpha 1, which is the angle of this first section to the new angle alpha 2 which is right here and so this equation must be solved for alpha 2 given alpha 1 once we solve for alpha 2 the bead moves on up and alpha 2 now becomes alpha 1 and the process is repeated. This is the very basic uh, procedure in a numerical method of this nature. What I've done next is to put this equation here into a basic program, coded it in, and let it run. So let's see what happens. So this is the program written in Power Basic. There are two factors which have to be determined by experimental data. Uh, the first is the friction factor right here. There is friction loss at the top of the bead chain pile as it emerges uh, from the pile to be drawn up by the chain moving above it. I found about 0.4 works good, but you can play around with uh, this factor uh, to see what works best with your data. So, yeah, hold on a second. It's, uh, what? I'll, I'll be done in a minute. No. Well, tell her no. No, I'll be done. Well, it's her own fault. Tell her not to hold the cat and the vacuum cleaner at the same time. Jeez. Sorry about that. The second factor to be determined by experimental data would be the starting angle right here. I have about pi over 2 minus 0.1. Of course, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. We straight up. Minus 0.1 would give it a, a slight angle coming out of the top of the beaker. Uh, this is what we see in the experiments. So this is can be played around with, with 2. So let's run the data and see what we get. Output shows a loop height of about 0.26 meters. Uh, experimental data was, I believe, on this uh, right at 0.25, pretty close. Velocity of 2.7, roughly, meters per second. Uh, data was 2.8, so it's pretty close. So there you go. Uh, good luck. i got to get up now. Oh, jeez. Oh, My leg fell asleep.
I hate when that happens. It's gonna be up all night now. Damn. Here we see a plot of the output of the program with the beads coming out of the top of the beaker on the left, going up, forming a loop, and dropping back down to the floor on the right. Looks very similar to what we see in real life.